Okay guys, this is a series that you're gonna to wanna to see. This is me interviewing a few Colombianas about dating in Colombia. All the little nuances and the questions that you probably wanted to ask. If we miss some, we'll cover them in future videos. But this is the first video in a series of other videos to discuss dating in Colombia in 2023. Follow along. Hey, you watching them on right now? You're watching DC Born Rob on YouTube. So, uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever it is you're located. Thanks for watching. My name is Rob Christian, also known as DC Born Rob, DC Rob, or you can call me Rob. I told you I had a special series coming up, and this one is going to be my first one. Today, I am speaking with Maria. Maria, how are you today? Hi, I'm good, Rob. How are you? I am doing well. Thank you so much for jumping on. I need this valuable information for my viewers to help them maneuver the dating scene in Colombia. There's there's always an opinion. We would like to get an opinion from someone who lives there. So first question, where do you live? What part of Colombia are you in? Well, right now I'm located in Manizales, Caldas. This is a little far from the air cafeteria area. I don't know if you are aware of our place. I am near to Armenia and Pereira. So it's like a, the coffee triangle here. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, we have another a vlogger out there. Uh, where's Wes is out there, if you've ever seen his his channel. He moved to Manizales and got married to a Whoa. local. Yeah, and, and Manizales. Um, nice guy, too. So look him up. Uh, where's Wes? And for those who are not familiar with where's Wes, look him up, too. So how old are you, Maria? Well, I am 23 years old. Okay. Okay. So let's jump into some dating questions. So from what I know about the culture there. It's not necessarily a hookup culture. In other words, you know, I can't go there, meet somebody in a bar and, you know, all of a sudden we're intimate that night or, you know, we hook up that night. So is it is that true? And, and if not, can you explain what exactly the dating culture is there? For sure. Well, usually we're not like on that kind of culture where we go to a bar or when we go out alone and we meet up with somebody there. Like we're not kind of into that. We're more like into meeting people, you know, like, for example, oh, I have a friend that I know that you will like. Let me introduce you to my friend if I am aware that my friend is also into my friend. So it's kind of like I'm going to hook you up. But it's not like you are going to be hooked up by yourself. Like my friend is going to help me or my cousin is going to help me to hook up with somebody or maybe someone that I know from years ago. Maybe we start dating like I'm going to invite you to go out to dinner or let me invite you to a movie. And there we start like having more intimate moments, like going out more frequently. And that is how we usually get hooked up. We don't have that culture, a lot of like going out, but it can also happen. Like we're not completely close to that idea of meeting somebody from one night and they're maybe starting going out with that person, but we're more used to get out, like getting to dates with people that are known into our intimate circle. Okay, exactly. I, I was there in December. Uh, it had been two months since I broke up then, and I was getting my teeth done. And I told my dentist, who's my friend, I said, hey, Carlos, you know, I, I broke up a few months ago. He said, I'm going to have to hook you up. And I said, ah, <laughs> is that true? So that brought me into my next question, because I've been telling people this. It's not a hookup culture there. People don't meet dating. All this, so if you meet somebody out of the club, chances are she may be a working girl. She's not, you know, just somebody at a bar with her girlfriends that you're going to run up and meet. So my question was... Um, is it true that you have to be introduced by friends or family? And according to you, yes. Yeah, you do. usually is. Okay. Would you, next question, would you date a foreigner? Pardon me? Would you date a foreigner? Um, yeah. I mean, I will have to meet that person. I'm sure that maybe from somebody, like someone, let me introduce you to my friend or something like that. I'm not sure if I will go out and a foreign come here like, hello. It will be kind of strange for me, but I will not be close to that kind of like situation. But I will prefer to date someone that is known by someone more intimate, but I will not be close to that option of dating someone from outside of my country. 
because I think that we need to like get to know everyone at some point we're going to be foreigners in another country so we shouldn't close that opportunity to someone else Exactly. Okay. I'm a firm believer and, and all my viewers know uh, my whole goal for this channel is to encourage people to channel because I mean, encourage people to travel because the more people you get to meet. I mean, I just got back from Taiwan. Now I have that experience and it changed who I am just from being there for two weeks. That changed who I am. The same with Medellin changed who I am from Vietnam, the Philippines, or El Salvador. It changes who you are when you get to experience someone else's culture. So you would date a foreigner, but he needs to be introduced to you. Good yeah, information. Yeah, it will be better for me. Okay, so this this is good information. So if, if you were to date a foreigner, would your intentions, would it be possible to have intentions of getting married or would it be just, okay, I would date a foreigner, but then I can just learn a little bit about them. Would, would you entertain the possibility of getting married in time? Well, I think that it depends on the person that I'm meeting. It doesn't matter if it's foreign or he's from Colombia. Like, I don't think that that is the most important thing. I think that it should be someone that I can enjoy the time with. It doesn't matter if I have to speak English all the time, if that person does not speak Spanish or anything. I don't think that that is the most important to be married. I think that it has to be like the connection. But if it's someone that is outside from my country, I will be well, more than happy to know the culture, to also get like into that thing of knowing, of traveling. Maybe we can go out together to meet another cultures. Maybe we can be located on a different country that it's neither Colombia or the country where that person is from. I think that we, we, can, we have to be open to all of the ideas and to all of the people that we can meet. Excellent. Well put, well put by the way. So if you were to date, and I'm putting a whole bunch of hypotheticals out here, but if you were to date a foreigner, I know you haven't yet, but would you entertain the possibility of getting married? Yeah, well, yeah, I think I will be open to get married soon. I do think that if I am outside of my country and I meet someone, I will be open to marry that person if the opportunity is there, you know? Like, okay. if I meet someone, we get in love, and I'm outside of my country, I will be more than happy to stay there, know the culture, get a job, like, create a family, create my own uh, environment. Okay, so uh, a lead-in from that question would be, if you did meet someone... You got hooked up, you got introduced, and you did find yourself attracted to it, and then you guys fall in love, and you, you want to take it to the next step and get married. The question is going to come up. Where would you live? Would you rather stay in your own country, have him move there, or would you want to go through the whole K-1 process and get a you know a fiancé visa to move to the United States, or whatever country it was? Well, let's say that we're talking about someone from the USA. So... I think that being completely honest, it will have to be like a decision taken from both. I will prefer to stay here in Colombia because this is a beautiful country. The life is more, let's say, friendly. Like you can be friends with your neighbor. You can be friends with the person from that is selling lemons at the street. You can be friends with anyone. But in the USA, the kind of life it's just like work, stay at home, just travel. And it's, I don't know, it's not the kind of like that I enjoy. That is why I really love Colombia because it's more like more friendly. You have more free days. You have more time like to enjoy life. You don't have to be always working, but it also depends on the other person. If the other person has their life there and we both think that we're going to have better opportunities there, I will say that we can move. We can create a life. We can maybe create something there. And if we have the opportunity, we can come back. Well put. Well, well, you you put some thought into this. This is this is interesting. Do you have any girlfriends that have dated foreigners before? Well, yeah. Yeah, I think that one of my friends used to date someone that eats from Mexico. But it will be kind of different. 
not as uh, someone maybe from the United States or maybe, I don't know, uh, from Germany or something because of the culture, because we have a similar culture like in, in Latin America in general. So I think that even being a foreign, it's kind of someone that it's very similar to us. I don't know if it's well put. You know, it, 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 what you said in your last comment got me because you're aware because I think I have this question a little bit further down. What do you think of America and Americans? Because a lot of people, at least from our point of view, we think that you and all the other countries that we visit, that they think all Americans are rich. But you know that we are overwhelmed with work. We're having to work. We're stressed out here. It seems like you know this already and you're aware that life is a whole lot more, let's say, peaceful in Colombia and many other countries too. The stress is high here. How, have you been to the United States? How are you aware of this? No, I have not been in the USA. However, I work for a company in the USA that I cannot mention, that it's mm -hmm. of course for uh, well, legal reasons, you know, but I do work mm -hmm. for people of the USA and I work from here. So I can like feel the difference each time that I have to deal directly with a, with a person, I can feel like they are always very stressed out. Like the little thing is like the worst. It can completely damage your day if it's not okay. However, here we're like, well, it doesn't matter. It's gonna be better tomorrow. We we have like a like that kind of different attitude. And I am very aware that not everyone that lives in the USA is rich. I know that it's very similar to living here in Colombia. We can find poor people, we can find middle class people, and we can find rich people. In it's not always gonna be the opportunity that you're gonna be like, oh, I met someone that is from USA and he's rich. No, like that it's a completely stereotype that we have here and that is not true at all. We are, or well, at least I am aware that to have money in the USA means a lot and that working, it's not like working here, like a lot of free days, a lot of working hours. It's, it's very, very difficult to be like rich there. It's also mm -hmm. difficult here, but I think that the life there, it's, heavier it's a lot more heavier it's not so peaceful it's very stressful so that is why i do have that contrast on the like i would prefer colombia by for living but i know that working there it's a great opportunity so absolutely yeah and you're 100 percent correct too you have a, a good understanding i guess that's from working for a u.s company you get to see it firsthand that exactly. we're not just sitting here with money. Guys who come down there spend a lot of money to come down there. Some go into debt to go there, Brazil, wherever else. Everybody's trying to get out of the country um, for numerous reasons. But well, let me ask you, what, what are your thoughts on dating for money? Meaning someone who were to date and with the intentions of getting married, but getting married for money. What, what do you think of that? that, that whole scenario? Well, I'm not kind of into it. I'm not kind of just like getting married for the money because uh, I just think that that can backfire a lot. It's not okay because it's just like, it's attached to what we're talking about. Like you are marrying someone just because you think that that person has money, but anyone can show off. I can come here and say like, I have a lot of money, I am a CEO or something. And you're gonna say, wow, she's a CEO there, wow, oh my God. But at the end, you're gonna realize that I, I might be not CEO, that I might not have that money that I'm showing off. So if you're marrying someone just because that person is showing you that they have money, that they have a lot of luxury and everything, you are going on the wrong way, like on the whole wrong way, because money is not everything. I mean, money, of course, is something very essential nowadays. You need money to live, but it's it's more important to have someone that you can actually rely on, to have someone that can actually be your support, that if that person is out of money or that if you're out of money, you're gonna both support each other instead of that you're gonna be out if that person loses their money, like if you're there just for the money and that person for 
like I don't know how to put this, but if that person, for example, let's say makes a bad inversion and they lost all their money, you're gonna leave immediately to look for someone that has the money that you just lost. But you need to find someone that stays with you. That is true. That is true. Wow, you're only 23. You're pretty knowledgeable. You're pretty, pretty savage. So what do you think of people who, who date for money? In other words, what if I, I don't know if you know U.S. salaries, but I don't know. What's a low salary in Colombia and what's a high salary? Well, let's say let's monthly. Say monthly, if you are winning monthly for me, I don't know if this is going to like be a uh, low for someone but like a low salary for me will be like the basic that we we want here that it's one million and two hundred pesos because if we are like realistic the rent here is very expensive the basic service like water air gas air, the light power that it's very expensive so taking all of that into account that it's not a lot but i think that i very good salary that you can have like a very good life taking into mind that i do not have children so that it's a very important point for me it will be a good salary between four me uh, four million pesos to five million pesos because it's like you can pay rent or you can put like uh, that money for your own house you can get into a credit with the bank you can pay your services you can like save money for the future and you can also have some 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 extra money to like go out in the in the week or like to make a delivery or something so I do think that that will be a good amount of money to win monthly okay so well here, here's my next question if you're dating someone who's making one mil, 200 pesos, um, and, and or somebody making four to five uh, million pesos, if you love them both, would it matter which one you pick? Would you pick, would you pick, well, let me, let me rephrase that. Would you pick somebody who made more money and you weren't in love versus falling in love with somebody who, who made the one mil, 200 pesos? Well, I'll be very honest and I will stay with the person that I'm actually in love. That is the one that is earning less money. And that is because maybe that person will have the opportunity to earn more in the future. Like we don't know for sure what is going to happen. Maybe that person that is earning four to five can lose their job and start winning one, one million two hundred. And that person that I left, that I was actually in love, kind of start earning more. And here, well, at least I don't know if I am the only one, but I, I actually like to think that when you're actually marrying someone, like you're going to leave, you're going to share your life, it should be 50-50. Like if that person can help, well, not 50 50, like I win 5 million and I'm gonna put the whole amount and you're not gonna put anything. But if you have less and I can put more, then we're gonna try to make it very equal for both. But if you, if you cannot like earn as much or we can earn the same, we can go 50 50 and we can try to look different ways to earn more money, like have different. Like, yeah, you can make some business. You can, like, start selling things. I don't know. I think that I would prefer the person that I'm actually in love. Gotcha. Okay, well, let's, let's talk roles briefly. The role of the wife versus the husband or boyfriend, girlfriend in a relationship. Do you believe that it's the man's responsibility to take care of the bills and the wife take care of the home? possibly kids, um, but more so take care of the man? Or do you think it's, you know, like we're sold here in the United States, everybody has to work. And like you just said, the 50-50, every, both of us need to work. And, you know, because chances are, if they're American, many other countries too, but let's, for instance, if I were to move there and I'm American, I need to make American money. I can't move there and make 
money in Colombia. I'm not going to make a lot of money. I need to have a job where I can, like I do, you know, work from home. So I can work from there as long as it's the same time zone. So do you believe, what are your, what's your position on roles between the husband and the wife? I am, or I mean, I do agree that maybe someone has to take more responsibility into the bills. And I also think that someone has to take more responsibility into the house. But I'm not like onto the stereotype of that the husband is the one that pays, the woman is the one that stay at home. Because it can be like all the way around. It can be the woman that pays the bill and the husband who stays at home. You know, like... I am aware that maybe on the relationship, there's going to be the one that has more like sense of cleaning, that prefers to have the house very tidy and that really like enjoys like making all the housework. And maybe that person can be, well, okay, if you prefer that and you will like that, if you want to stay at home and we have the income to only want to work. Then, well, if it's the wife, let's stay at home, take care. But if it's the husband, I think it's also okay. But I do think that for that role to be taken, that only one take care of the bill, I think that it has to be with a very high income because you're going to be like, mm, let's say, you're going to be providing for your house. So you need to make sure that the basic needs are, are covered and that everyone is okay. Like, Everyone is having like a good life, enjoyable, healthy. So I do am more onto the type of both working, but if there's income available, then one can stay at home and make the homework and the other one can just go ahead and pay the bills. So for you, there's no real separation between a wife's duties and a husband's duties in the home. Yeah, I don't I, I don't find like a separation directly because sometimes the husband is the one that enjoys more like making lunch and you know, washing the clothes. But so usually like we do have that idea that it's usually the woman that is more like used to, but it's because that is what we're taught. Like, yeah, you have to do this. But sometimes the women are actually enjoying more going to the office, working. And there are husbands that actually prefers to stay at home and stay with the kids. So I, I don't find that it has to be directly the woman or the wife. I think that it should be the person that enjoyed that job the most because staying at home is also a job for me. Like it's not easy to wake up, make breakfast, clean the house. If you have mm -hmm. children, then take care of them. I don't think that it's easy. So yeah, it has to absolutely. be. Yeah, it, it's not easy work um, for sure. Um, that, that is a job to take to take care of the home. Just so you know, and I don't know how aware you are of this, but there are many Americans and many Europeans and other, you know, Australians or whatever, they they are leaving their country and leaving their local women. And a lot in this case, since, well, since you're there, we're talking, they moved to Colombia. They moved to Thailand. They're moving to find an agreeable uh, woman for them, somebody who plays the role of the wife or the girlfriend and not necessarily competing with them to make the money. Because you know that's the grind that we're in right now. We're all stressed, male and female, because we both have to work. And we both have to work and live together just to pay for you know, a decent place. We have to pay, but when you come there, the man's money will go a little bit further, in which case a lot of men are thinking that we would just rather have the wife stay at home and take care of him in the house and if there's children, the children as well. Are you aware of that thought pattern from Americans at least? Yeah, I, I am very aware of that. And I don't think that it's only from like U.S. people or like our like European people, I think that you can also see that a lot in our culture, in the uh, our Latin American culture, that can also be seen a lot because that is what, for example, that is what my mom taught me. Like, you have to keep the house clean. You have to learn how to cook. And I do 
I do think that a lot of women also enjoy that. For here, at least here on, on Colombia, I am very aware of a lot of my friends that they say like, I would like to just to get a husband, get a family. I would love to stay at home. I am very aware that that is like a big stereotype that exists between still is between the the couple dynamic between like getting married. Like I am very aware of that, and I I think that if you like that kind of life, you're gonna enjoy it a lot. Like if you like to be your wife and to stay at home and to keep everything good for your husband, you're going to like enjoy it a lot. But if you are not into that type of life, like if you are aware that maybe your goals are different, you shouldn't force yourself to do that, you know? Exactly. But I think, I think um, possibly, and you tell me this, it's possibly, I, I understand your, your thoughts and your frame of mind, but you're also educated. You have a good job. Could it be the position of the girl that m helps her make that decision? In other words, if she's not making a lot of money and she realizes this, she didn't go to university. Um, she doesn't have a good American job. She doesn't speak English um, because that comes along with it also. Um, do you think her position may change at that point? For sure. I mean, I'm going to be completely honest with this opinion because even for me, if I said like, I am not getting like the enough incomes, I think that it will be better for me to stay at home and be a wife. I will also take that decision, at least until the point that I can maybe do something for myself, maybe to help me out, or maybe I will enjoy that life now that I am living like as a complete a full-time house mom I think that someone that is actually well that doesn't have like education or things like that they do have a different type of of thoughts about the situation of being a wife and as you said if they're for example married to someone that it's from outside of our country uh usually the type of thought that that kind of woman are going to have is just, yeah, I'm going to marry to someone in order for them to give me a good life. And as they're going to be providing to the house, I'm going to be keeping the house okay. Mm -hmm. I, I am 100% aware that that kind of situations are a real, are a real thing here and that a lot of women and co being completely honest, not only like, poor women maybe let's say it in that way that don't have an education or that they don't have the enough incomes to maybe go out and make a life only by themselves I am also aware that there are women that have a lot of incomes that they have a lot of opportunities that they also prefer that that okay this person has earns more money lives in another country I'm gonna just go live on, a, on another life I'm gonna like have a different type of life so I would prefer to go with this person I am very aware that that it's kind of a everyday situation okay well let me ask you this well, a foreigner such as myself I'm a foreigner coming there um, visiting Colombia if I'm coming there to meet uh, a female or a partner, we've already discussed it's best to be hooked up by somebody there, to be introduced by friends or family. Is it still possible for me to come and meet somebody just at the Jumbo, at the Korea, just at the local store at the Exito? Can I can I meet somebody at a local store or just in the park? Is it is it relatively easy? Well, I don't think it's not easy because we are very friendly, like if you come here and I am, let's say, I'm in the grocery store and I'm checking on my meal and you come here and say, hello, how are you? I will, I will talk to you. And if I find you like cute, I see you and I like, I see what I like. I see, okay, this guy is cute. I think I, I like him. I will share my information with you. Like it will be okay. I will be more aware about any kind of danger because 
it can happen that maybe that person is not interested directly into going out with you, but maybe on like stealing something from you or kidnapping you. We're kind of aware of that kind of situations can happen, but I don't think it will be very difficult. I do think that it also depends on the way that you approach the person. Because if you just go there and say, hey, have my number, like you will do like, in, let's say in, in USA, I'm aware that, hello, this is my number, call me. That can happen. Here, <laughs> it will be like, excuse me, who are you? I don't know you, what are you talking about? So it depends on the way that you approach to the person, but I don't think it will be very difficult. Or at least here in Manizales, we are not very, um, uh, let's say, we don't care if we know you, like, we're going to talk to you. We, it's mm -hmm. okay. Like, if you come here and talk to me, I will talk to you. I will, I will tell you, like, a little story. So a few days ago, I was, like, outside with uh, some friends, and we were in a 24-7 store, and there was a foreign person looking for bread. He was like, where is the bread store open at this hour? And I just started giving him the directions. Like, it was not even talking to me, but I was aware what we needed. And I just told him and he was like, oh, thank you. And we started a whole conversation. Or Like, it was very great. He was very thankful for everything. We almost took him to the bread store and everything. Like, it was something like that. So yes, we are I, very I, out. I, 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 I've had that happen. You guys will go out of your way, even walk you to the store. Let, no, 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 let me show you. But the caveat is you speak English. So if an American walks up and starts a conversation, you can actually have a conversation with them. But most people there don't speak English. And if they do, they don't want to because I've approached people and just in general conversations, it's the struggle is real for Americans coming there or other foreigners coming there. They need to learn how to speak Spanish really before they go there. Would you, this is an obvious question, but would you recommend that foreigners learn how to speak Spanish before coming there if your intention is to find a mate or dating? Of course. I mean, that it's like, I know you. Like my response was gonna be yes for sure, and not yeah. only if you're gonna be like dating, just if you wanna come here and have a better experience, it's better if the person that you're trying to speak with can actually understand you. It's the same like if you go to USA and you start speaking Spanish, maybe someone is trying to understand you because you might find someone that also speaks Spanish, but it's better if you go there and you actually speak the language because your experience is going to improve a lot. The people will be more welcoming. The people will be, oh, yeah, I got you. Come here. Let me help you. So I think if you're just looking to come here and if you want to date, it's more than essential to learn at least a little bit of Spanish because we can make the effort to look into Google Translate, okay, type here, but it's gonna be difficult at some point to have like some sort of more intimate communication. Like it will be better for, for a foreign to learn Spanish before coming here to hook up. <laughs> You need to learn a little bit. I speak enough, but let me switch it. Just a few questions left, but let me switch it slightly. Um, so what do you think of foreign men visiting Colombia to have sex with women in that business? You know what business I'm talking about. It's legal there. What do you think of Americans or other foreigners coming to your country for that reason? I mean, I am not like, I do not like a lot that kind of a stereotype that that kind of creates to Colombia directly, because for sure a lot of people is going to come here. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, give me just one second, please. Okay. My apologies, it's just like she's very small yet, and so she makes a lot of love when she's not supposed to. But That's as I was saying, oh, I'm sorry, I got lost. Can you repeat the question? The, the question about um, dating for that reason. Coming to Colombia, Americans and other 
tourist coming to Colombia for that reason specifically? Okay, yeah, I'm sorry, I got lost. Yeah, as I was saying, I am not like into that stereotype that can create Colombia because we are not only onto that business and that can make men to think that all the Colombian women are into that business of exchanging everything for money when we're not onto that. However, I also think that It's gonna happen on every country, you know? Even in, in the US that is also not legal, we can find that type of work. And we're gonna find clients for every single kind of work here, even Colombian people, even foreign people. So I do not think that it's, it's like all the foreigners are coming just for that. I'm not okay onto the foreign thinking that Colombia is only for that. But I understand that it's a job for the women that are doing it. And it's a pleasure for the person that is paying for it, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you're coming here for pleasure and you're aware that you're coming here for that, it's just that be respectful with the person that is giving you that job. Be and try to not create like a stereotype. If you want to come here to do it, that it's on your own, it's your business. But mm -hmm. let's not think that all the women are for that. They they are working, so that's their job. But if you're meet a if you're gonna meet a woman, let's say as we said in the grocery store, if you're gonna meet a woman there, don't think that that woman in particular it's working on that business. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, let me segue that one a little bit and, and ask you, what do you think about, and this is mostly females backed by groups or gangs or whoever they are, but what do you think about the, the druggings, the scopolamine, the devil's breath, the druggings where they rob you and take your money? Um, what's your thoughts on that? Well, no, I, I, my thoughts on that are heavy, like, I don't want to use any kind of buzzwords or anything, but for me, that is just disgusting, like, it's, it's gross, it's not okay, I, I completely disagree on that, that for me, it's a lack of respect, not only with the person that, well, that you're doping, that you're doing that, but that, that is also a lack of respect with yourself, like, if you want the money, well, ask for it. Like, okay, let's go ahead and go out and you pay me to go out or something, like if you have the need. But just don't go ahead and do that to a person just because you want to steal from them. And it's also very bad that that kind of persons that do that, and as you said, it's mostly women, they take advantage that the foreign person cannot like go ahead and tell for example, to the bartender, they cannot tell like, hey, she drugged me. They are not gonna understand you. She's just gonna say, no, he's too wrong, let's go. And it's going to happen, they're gonna rob you. So that is something I completely disagree on. And not only for foreigners, but like on that it, it, it can happen here, it can happen oh, yeah. on any country. We need to be very aware of the people that are around us of our dreams and everything because it's just not okay i i completely disagree with that does that happen in manizales well i am aware that it's not very common like it doesn't happen like a lot as you can see maybe in medellin or in bogota that it's more common but i am aware that there have been some cases i understand that what happened here, it was like they met They met on Tinder. That person went to the other, uh, to the guy's house and they just drug him and they took everything out of the house. And well, can you imagine waking up in your own house without, an, with an empty house, without anything? That, that was very, very heavy here. It was very known, but it doesn't happen a lot. It's not very common. We don't have that kind of culture here of having a lot of foreign people on the Paris. We get to see a lot of traveling people like um, 
let's say that they come here, but they don't stay directly in the city. They stay like in the small towns around the city because of the, what I told you before about the uh, triangle coffee and everything. We do have like different type of tourism here. It's mm -hmm. not like on Medellin that it's more powering and stuff. Yeah, my uh, I've been doing this for three and a half years and the past couple of years, especially during COVID, times were rough there. Uh, I'm working three stories right now of people who got drugged. I've had to be the one to report that Americans and other foreigners have been killed because the girls that give them the drugs aren't nurses. They don't know how much they're giving them and they just want to knock them out. Um, so it it's an issue, and you know I want people to travel, but I want them to travel safely. And uh, do you know anybody that's ever drugged anybody? No, I'm glad I don't know anybody that has been drugged or that oh I drugged this person. Like that would be yeah. not okay. I will go directly to the police because, like, no, that is as you said, that is like playing with someone else's life. You are not aware to what you're doing you don't know if that drug is actually gonna be little for that person maybe it's okay for you like you can go ahead and do that to you but you mm -hmm. don't know what it's going to do to other person so i don't exactly. know anyone near from that experience thanks to that exactly okay two more questions one's light one's a little heavier the light one is how'd you learn english english is good <laughs> I'm sorry. I was. I got like the connection lost. I. You said okay. that you learned. Yeah, I have two questions. One's a little light. One's a little heavy. The light one is: How did you learn English so well? Well, I actually learned by myself. It's gonna be kind of like a surprise, but I was actually like when I was very into like the english i was very into the american culture i was very fan of like pop culture britney spears and everything when i was growing up so i got like very interested into the I, usa culture and all of that that is why i'm also kind of aware of how it works there and well i started like using my english a lot like i started going into the english uh, working and everything and that is how i've been like getting a better level of my English because of my work and my taste, most of all. Yeah, and a better job. When you can speak another language, the same here. If I, sp if I was fluent in Spanish, I would make more money here or anywhere. I mean, that's this country's second language is Spanish. If I call the electric company right now, it may tell me on the message, for Spanish, press one. I'm like, wait a minute, we're in America. For Spanish, press one? It's not even English first. It's crazy, but... It's it's uh, it's important to learn another language, especially if you're going to that country. But well, one last question I told you, one was light, one was heavy. This one's a little bit heavier. What do you think of the John Pulos case? You know, the murder of uh, Valentina Pres Palacios. What do you think of that whole case? Well, I, I've been following that case because that was like traumatizing for me. The Sunday that I saw it, like when I saw the news and when I saw everything, I was kind of like traumatized with the whole situation because I just couldn't believe it. I mean, I am, my whole point of view is that no one deserves to die in that way. I am kind of aware that people have been saying that she was like using him, that she was there for the money and everything. And even if that is like the truth, because at the end, only him and her are the, one, are the only ones that know the actual truth of the, what happened. But even if she was just using him, he should then like, okay, go back to USA or maybe go to another city, maybe go look for another girlfriend that is not going to use you actually. But she didn't deserve to die in that way. Yeah. I am... I am not okay with the fact that he thought that everything was just going to be okay. Like he could just leave to Panama and then to Istanbul because he was going to be very far away. I don't, I don't think that that was okay also because, well, I mean, you commit a crime, you are aware of that. But it's just 
no one deserves that, you know, even if if she was like the kind of the worst person, no one deserves to be, you know, thrown into a garbage can. Yeah, that, it was, it's disturbing. I, I watched some of the video, it's live, it's on YouTube during the day and, but it's delayed so you can watch it whenever you want. But he's talking like normal, just like, uh, you know, uh, I thought I did this. So when I sat down, he asked me that I went, he was just talking normal, like, dude, you just murdered somebody. And all the evidence is pointing to you. You're not getting out of this. I hope they fry him. They're, he's not getting out of it. But well, one last question. I thought that was the last one. But on the same note, I, for personally, I hope that other Colombians and Colombianas there are not thinking poorly about Americans because of this one guy. Um, but I know that there's, there's some, there, there's some unhappy people, let's say in Colombia about this and the fact that he was American, the fact that he did try to escape through Panama, he had $7,000 on him, whatever, whatever. I, I, I recognize that they are upset, but do you think there's going to be any backlash against Americans because of this case? It's just like, that is going to bring I think that the Americans had like some sort of a stereotype with the kind of like the murders, because when you hear like name of the murders, it's always going to be linked to USA, like the worst 10 murders of the war. And there's always going to be, they were born in the United States. That is the stereotype that maybe this guy is going to bring here. Like people is gonna to start to investigate and they're gonna say like, oh, everyone there, is, they like to kill. But I think it's just a stereotype. I think that that might affect on a part, but I also think that people here needs to also be aware that we cannot just go ahead and stereotype all the American people just because this guy did something that horrible. Because we cannot believe that Make it can happen here. It can be your your uncle that goes ahead and do something as terrible as that, and it doesn't matter that he was not Colombian. He's still gonna create that stereotype, mm -hmm. you know. So I think that that is gonna maybe go ahead and open like get into an open conversation on to what has happened in the USA with that kind of like situations that you we can see a lot of murders but i think that we also need to be very very aware that it's just a stereotype and that we cannot believe that just because one person did something everyone is gonna go ahead and do it because it's not because you were born in usa but it's because of what you have on your mind you know it doesn't matter if you were born there or if you were born in Canada. Like, that doesn't have anything to do with the fact that you are capable of committing something that bad. Because in Colombia, we can also see a lot of violence and we can see things a lot more worse than that. And that mm -hmm. is a reality that maybe people don't want to accept. Because everyone says, oh, he did something so terrible. But if you are aware, like just a few months ago, a lot of people was found dead in garbage cans and it was caused by Colombians and it was Colombian people. So it's not mm -hmm. so anything different. It's the same thing. And the only difference is his nationality that, that it shouldn't be better. It should be mm -hmm. like, oh, it's because he's from USA. No, it's because okay. he's a bad person. Exactly, exactly. Well, Maria, thank you so much for coming on. You, you've been very forthcoming. And honesty is always the best policy. And that's why I wanted to ask these questions to put them to you, Colombiana, to let us know as foreign visitors, this is actually the way that you guys think. We normally only hear ourselves over and over, you know, what we think you think. It matters to me anyway to get the thoughts out of your head and so that other foreigners and visitors that are going to come soon can get a better understanding as to, to what uh, the thoughts are there. But did I miss anything? It, were there any questions that you thought I would ask? Um, because you, you didn't know beforehand, so it was all new to you. So she didn't even see the questions beforehand, guys. So, 
So was there anything that you think I missed or anything you wanted to add? No, I think that it was a great topic to talk and mostly because of the last question that you made, because right now everyone is talking like the foreign marriages, the foreign people, everyone has like that topic in their mouth. So I think it's good also to foreigners to know that here in Colombia, we don't have like that thinking on the, that they are only looking for for workers or things like that. We also have the thought that you're open to meet people, that you enjoy coming here and that you enjoy living here. Just you're a great example of that, that you said mm -hmm. that you always come back to Medellin. So I think that all the questions were good. I think that I actually did a good job helping you with the question. I was very honest with everything. So I do hope that my opinion was actually good for you. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. I am. Please read the comments uh, to the video when it posts, either tomorrow or the following day. Um, we'll get some feedback and, and get thoughts from them because I'm going to do a few other interviews as well. But I want to get their feedback, get other visitors. Again, only 60%, I thought, being from America, I thought 95% of my uh, viewers were from the U.S. No, only 60%. The rest are from, I get emails from... <laughs> Dubai, uh, Thailand, uh, Vietnam. So this will be interesting, the feedback that we get from this. But again, thank you so much, Maria. I'll, I'll let you go now. Um, we can talk okay. soon. I'll, I'll make sure that you have my contact information. If you have any questions for me, feel free to reach out anytime. But thank no. you, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome and thank you for your time. I, I, I'm I glad that I was able to help you and I will be waiting for the for the link to see a video and to see the comments. I'm, I hope to see what people think about my opinion. Absolutely. Well, again, thank you so much. Have a good evening. Okay, you too. Thank you. Goodbye now. Okay, all righty. Bye-bye. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure you go down and hit subscribe definitely like it helps that YouTube algorithm. You know what I'm talking about? You see what I'm saying? Join me on social media. I am DC Born Rob Official on Instagram. I am DC Born Rob Official One on TikTok. I am DC Born Rob O on Twitter. Don't be like this guy right here. You're you're just so stupid. I, I had to send you a video to let you know you're so stupid. That's right. Don't be like this guy right here. Join me on social media. Headed to Medellin, Colombia? See my guy Andres with Nomad Travel for safe airport pickups and drop-offs and tours. Contact information in the description below. If you're in Medellin and you need dental work done, from a basic cleaning to major reconstructive surgery, come see my guy, Dr. Carlos Mori. Contact information in the description below.